One of the key features of the Pokemon franchise is that you can bring your Pokemon from game to game. Granted, it gets a bit wishy-washy starting with the Switch games, but like a Pikachu you caught in Gen 3 can be brought all the way to Gen 9. However, there are a select few Pokemon that are forever stuck in their games with no hope of coming to the modern day. Before Generations 1 and 2 made it to the Virtual Console, the Pokemon from the original Kanto and Johto games were stuck to only the first two generations. And even after the Virtual Console release, that continues to be true for the original cartridges. So you could say that in a way, those Pokemon are lost to time, but that isn't my focus here. The Generation 1 and 2 cartridges hold the special ability to connect to Pokemon Stadium 1 and 2. And in those games, there are special gift Pokemon that can be sent to those mainline games. But due to only working with the original cartridge versions of these games, they have no official way of making their way forward. There is like 11 Pokemon there forever doomed to only be on the first two generations of Pokemon. Generation 3 only has a possible case of a Pokemon being lost to time, and that deals with the Shadow Pokemon from the GameCube games. While these Pokemon can be purified and transferred over, there's a whole list of Shadow moves that are forever bound to these games, and of course, Shadow Lugia. While Shadow Lugia can be purified and transferred, there's no way to get that exclusive Shadow form to leave XD, and they've never even added it to Pokemon Go, even though that is a no-brainer. Next up, we have what is maybe the most famous case of a Pokemon that is forever lost, the Spiky Ear Pichu. This Pichu, unlike other Pichus, was incapable of evolving, and could only be accessed by getting the limited time event Pikachu Colored Pichu. This spiky ear Pichu was able to do everything that any normal Pokemon could. It could battle, it could walk around with you, it could even participate in the Pokeathlon. Everything except one thing. It can't leave Heart Gold and Soul Silver. This poor Pichu is forever locked to specifically just these two games, never to be seen in the main series again. On the bright side, at least Smash Bros Ultimate gave this fella some, some appreciation with a Pichu ult. For a quick stop in the Unova region. There's the special bosses from the Pokestar Studios. Well, these are not technically Pokemon, I thought they were worth the mention. Moving on to our next actual Pokemon, we come to Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire, where we are introduced to Cosplay Pikachu, a special Pikachu with a black heart on her tail and it can change into different costumes which grant it different moves of different types. Cosplay Pikachu can't be moved out of these games meaning that this Pokemon that you are given very early in on your journey, which a lot of people probably use on their teams, is forever stuck behind while everything else can move forward. Cosplay Pikachu does have the bonus, however, that it has a decent amount of representation outside of the main series. Three of the costumes have been available in Pokemon Go. Libre got its own character in Pokémon Tournament, as well as a skin for Pikachu in Smash Ultimate. And of course, they made a bunch of merchandise. Speaking of Pokemon Go, every single costume Pokemon is stuck in Go, with no way of transferring into home. Even Ash Hat Pikachu, which is obtainable in the main series, is unable to be transferred. Not only are all of them locked to Go, but so many were exclusive to limited time events, leading to them just being even more lost to time. In the X and Y games, at the very end of the story, you battle AZ and afterwards, his precious Floette returns to him. This Floette looks completely unique from every other Floette, and is known as the Eternal Flower Floet. This special form exists in the code of both the Gen 6 and 7 games. It even has its own signature move. However, despite all this, this Floet has never legally been obtainable and is seemingly truly doomed to be forgotten. Now reaching Gen 7. We don't reach any issues until we get to Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon. In these games, there's a stamp collectible which allow you to get the totem Pokemon from which you face in these games. The totems that were in the original Sun and Moon are perfectly fine and can move along. However, if they are moved to home, they lose their totem sizing and are back to the original size for their species. Now, while this can be seen as lost enough, this only applies to the one that were in the original Sun and Moon. The totem Pokemon exclusive to the Ultra games, Alolan Marowak, Rimbombi, Arachnoquid, and Tojidomaru are all locked to the Ultra games, not even being able to be moved into bank. So not only do totem Pokemon lose their size upon transferring, not even all of them can be transferred, leaving the only way to keep a true collection of this special subset of Pokemon is in Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon. Still in Gen 7, we have the first mainline Pokemon games on the Switch. Let's go Pikachu and let's go Eevee. These games only have the original 151 Pokemon, as well as Meltan and Melmetal. 
This game served as a way to entice Go players to become main series players, for it even had the first way of transferring Go Pokemon to the main series, albeit only for the first 150 Pokemon and Meltan and Melmetal. Surely this game couldn't have any Pokemon that would become lost, but it does. Your starter, based on which version you have, either Pikachu or Eevee, is forever locked to that specific game. Your starter is more than just a standard Pokemon in these games, being your form of HMs and always being on your model, even having a little petting minigame, and they are doomed to never leave these games. Also, due to Let's Go having a different way of handling stats, and they hadn't yet figured out how to handle these kinds of situations, all Pokemon from Let's Go that enter any other Pokemon game can never return to Let's Go. So you could end up with your entire team locked out of Let's Go while your partner Pokemon is forever stuck in it. As we move on to Generation 8, we reach a new leaf for Pokemon games. No longer is every Pokemon in every game, but only a curated list. This has been a highly heated topic for the past like 5 years since it was revealed. This video will not sway in either way, however, for the topic of this video, it is kind of important to note that now, not every Pokemon can go to every Pokemon game. Also at the start of Gen 8, Mega Pokemon are no longer around in the mainline games. You could consider these forms lost to time, however they do still feature in many side games, the anime, and of course, the merchandise. Our next stop is in the faithful remakes Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. Now the original Snow games didn't have anything locked to it, so why are these faithful remakes here? Spinda. Yeah, probably not what you were expecting, but BDSP Spinda are forever locked to BDSP, all because of a coding mess up. Spinda has like 4 billion different patterns, all determined by code, and from what I've seen reported about Spinda and BDSP is that how the code relates to the pattern is reversed. And so to stop there being a pattern discrepancy by either having it change between BDSP and everything else or fixing the code, they decided to make it so that BDSP Spinda just can't transfer from these games. The last stop on this journey will be Gen 9 with the Paldea region. Your ride Pokemon, either Coridon or Maridon based on your version, are forever locked to these games. Hell, they can't even leave your party. For the entire game, it operates entirely like an all-in-one version of the ride Pokemon from Legends Arceus. However, once you beat the final boss, you are granted the ability to change it into battle form, where it will then take up a slot of your party and you can battle with it, train it, whatever you may desire. So now it's like the ride Pokemon combined with the partner Pokemon from Let's Go where it is your only form of HMs mixed with what can be a trainable part of your team and is forever stuck in the singular game, never to be freed. The game even lets you catch a second battle-only version for your box legend, so you can trade it or store it in home or whatever you wish, but the one you spent your entire journey with, the one that plays an important role in the story, the one you bond with, will one day have to be left behind. And that should be every Pokemon that is lost to time. Hopefully one day there will be a way for us to get some of these very special Pokemon again. If there is any that I miss, I'd love to hear about them down in the comments. If you enjoyed, I'd really appreciate if you'd hit the like button and maybe even drop a sub as those really help out the channel. This has been BigBlast99 and thank you all for watching and I hope you all have yourselves a goddamn good one.